to introduce to you just a prosecutor, but the governor of the great state of New Jersey, Chris Christie. Governor. Thank you all very much. Thank you for welcoming me. I appreciate it. And, uh, and thank you to General Corbett for his kind invitation to come and spend the time with him today in Williamsport. You know, as a 12 year old, I always wanted to come to Williamsport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me 36 years to get here, but I have arrived. I have we'll, arrived. We'll invite you back next year. <laughs> Excellent. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm uh, most especially happy to be here to support someone who I've gotten to know over the last two years who is someone who's been leading in a state that has desperately needed leadership, someone who stood up to public corruption, stood up to those ills of our society that are difficult sometimes for us to even open our eyes and look at because they're so disturbing. But Tom Corbett's not only had his eyes open, he's been moving forward to fix those problems. And now you have an opportunity, an extraordinary opportunity, to put Tom Corbett in Harrisburg in the governor's chair, where he is going to be able to bring Pennsylvania back to the greatness that it once had and deserves again. And, you know, with three weeks left, three weeks left, you all can sense the desperation. There is desperation in the Democratic Party in Pennsylvania. And you can sense it, you see it on your televisions, you feel it, you hear it on the radio. I know a little bit about desperation. I saw desperation a year ago in New Jersey. In New Jersey, desperation had a white beard and glasses. <laughs> His name was John Corzine. He was desperate, desperate to hold on to power for his party. And now you see the Democratic establishment in these next three weeks are going to be real desperate because they know. They know that Tom Corbett has the issues on his side. They know he has common sense on his side. So now, get ready, Pennsylvania. All that's left is for them to try to smear a good man and try to make you that's believe right. something about Tom Corbett that you know from watching it over his entire career isn't true. Same thing happened to me in New Jersey. The people of New Jersey stood up and said, enough of that type of politics. Tom Corbett and you are going to stand together to say enough of that politics in Pennsylvania, and you're going to elect him governor on November 2nd. I know All right. that. Good stuff. That comes the good stuff because when you get the opportunity to leave, folks like Tom and I know how to grab the reins and leave. And they said you couldn't do it. You know, in New Jersey, when I walked in the door, John Corzine left me with a $2.2 billion deficit for the five months remaining in the last fiscal year. And the Democrats, they rubbed their hands in glee. They said, oh no, now see, the governor's going to have to raise taxes to fill this gap. And so I had a choice to make. I had to decide, do I sit down and talk to the legislature about increasing taxes to close that gap, or do I impound $2.2 billion in spending by executive order and balance that budget? Wow. Now, for those of you who've watched me for a little while, yeah. maybe you thought I could first. Yeah. So we signed an executive order, we impounded $2.2 billion of spending, and then I asked for a speech before the joint session of the legislature. And I went down there, my first speech before them, and this is what I said to them. You created a $2.2 billion deficit. You left it on my doorstep and the doorstep of the people of New Jersey. And you thought that you were going to get them to pay higher taxes to fix it. I just signed an executive order. I fixed it by myself. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Democrats on the floor of the legislature, they were dizzy. They didn't know what to do. The press came down and said, what happened? What just happened? The governor didn't ask you to do anything. He did it all himself. And, you know, they started calling me all kinds of names. You know, Julius Caesar, Napoleon Bonaparte, all those great leaders of the past. <laughs> and the next day, you know, I saw the Senate president. We were walking in together to the State House the next day. And I saw all these awful things he'd said about me in the newspaper in the morning. 
So I said to him, Steve, I got an idea for you. So how about I go upstairs and just vacate that executive order, and I'll let you guys find the 2.2 billion in spending to cut. He said, oh, Governor, don't overreact. You know, we, <laughs> we need to just fine, don't worry about it. And then we turned to the $11 billion deficit on a $29 billion budget that John Corzine left us for this fiscal year. And you're hearing the same things in Pennsylvania. You're yeah. hearing the Democrats say, there's no way that Tom Corbin can balance the budget and not raise taxes on the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And let me tell you, I know because I know Tom that there's no way that's going to happen. But I also, if you need further evidence, just look across the Delaware River and what we did in New Jersey. They sent me a tax increase, the millionaire's tax. And you know how that works in New Jersey. That's special New Jersey math. That means a tax on anybody who makes $400,000 or more, including small businesses that are trying to employ people. And I said, listen, you want to close down the government to get me increased taxes, that's fine. You go ahead and do it. But you know, the last guy they closed the government on, John Corzine, because they were arguing over how much to raise taxes, he moved a cot into the governor's office. During the government shutdown, he brought all the photographers and he said, look at that cot. I'm not leaving here. I'm going to stay here. Get in this office. Sleep right here until this crisis is solved. So I figured, since these were the same fellas who had been closing down the government with John Corzine, I needed to call them in and remind them there had been a change in personnel. And so I said to them, listen, you can close down the government if you want. That's your business. You want to do it? That's fine. People in New Jersey might be relieved to have you guys close down. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do it, don't think I'm moving some cot into the governor's office. I'm going to get in those black Suburbans. I'm going to go back to the governor's residence. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to order a pizza. I'm going to open a beer. And I'm going to watch the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> I was willing to sacrifice, you know I was, because if I'm willing to watch the Mets, I am willing to sacrifice. <laughs> and so, what happened? They sent me that tax increase, I vetoed it immediately, in the first 30 seconds that they handed it to me, I handed it right back to them. And then they passed my budget, 99.8% of the line items, exactly as I had sent them to them in March, and we had a balanced budget in New Jersey for the first time in eight years, without any new taxes or increased taxes on the people of our state. That's what Tom Corbett's going to do. I know that's the kind of Pennsylvania you want. I know it's the kind of Pennsylvania we need to grow jobs in the private sector again to put people back to work, to make people feel good and proud, once again, about the place they live and the people who lead them. So now it's up to you. There's three weeks to go. There's three weeks to go, and here's what you don't want to have happen. You don't want to wake up on the morning of November 3rd and have Tom Corbin have lost by this much and say to yourself, I could have done more. I could have come to a victory center like this and made more phone calls. I could have gone door to door, right? I could have done all of those things. I could have talked to my neighbors and my friends. I could have spoken to them at the church parking lot or at the soccer game. I could have said something to them when I went to pick up my kids from school. I could have said something about how much I believe in Tom Corbett and how much Pennsylvania needs his leadership. I could have done a little bit more. You don't want to have that feeling on November 3rd. You want to wake up on November 3rd with a resounding victory for Tom Corbett that sets Pennsylvania in a brand new direction yeah. of hope and opportunity yeah. and prosperity again. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Don't let the special interests win this one. Don't let them fool you over the next three weeks. I know the polls are good for Tom, and I'm thrilled about that. I'd much rather be winning than losing three weeks before. We all would. But I don't want you to get complacent about that. I don't want you to let up. The people who are here, I know, are already the converted. If you're here on Veterans Day, or Columbus Day. If you're on Veterans Day, the election will already be over. <laughs> <laughs> will be the governor elect. However, let's back up to Columbus Day. If you're here on Columbus Day with me and Tom Corbin, you already believe. You know, I had a minister explain to me one time, I've heard the phrase, preaching to the choir. Now, you know, people use that in kind of a negative way. They say, oh, I just preach to the choir, like you're wasting your time. I had this minister explain to me one time that he preaches to the choir. Yes. Chris, I preach to the choir, plead guilty to preach it to the choir. I preach to the choir so they'll sing. 
thought to myself, now I finally get it. I get it. So I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning. I know I'm coming to Williamsport to preach to the choir. But I'm preaching to the choir so you'll sing. So you'll sing to those family and friends and neighbors and relatives who may have been dispirited about politics, who may not want to participate in the process anymore because they've been so disappointed by the leadership of the past. You need to sing to them about the fact that there's a new leader. There's a new leader in Pennsylvania. Someone who's going to renew their confidence in the honesty and the integrity of government. Someone who's going to renew their confidence in the ability for government to get out of the way and let the private sector grow jobs again and put people back to work in Pennsylvania. Sing about a new leader who is going to take Pennsylvania in the direction it needs to go. That's why I'm yeah. here today. for his leadership. I know how hard this is, especially when you're in the last three weeks on that big bus out there. You feel like it's never going to get here. He's been working for a long time for the people of Pennsylvania, and he wants an opportunity to work even harder for you in a place where he can make the biggest difference. And I will tell you, when you're governor, you can make the biggest difference. And so I thank him. I thank him very much very much for his invitation for me to be here wow. very much to be thank very much for being part of the team that is going to change yeah. not only Pennsylvania but this whole region yeah. it's like Tom said when you have me and Tom Corbett on either side of the Delaware River yes. Yeah. 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 let's get to work let's get to the phones I'm in this Victory Center. Let's get to the doors all across Pennsylvania. Let's push the last three weeks, every spare minute you have, when you're not working or with your family, get up and get something done. Because I will promise you one thing that I have learned over the last two years from getting to know Tom Corbett. If you work hard for him, he will work hard for you, and he will not let you down, and he will not let Pennsylvania down. Thank you all very much.